<clears throat> All right, I think we are live. So this is a Razor to Razor podcast presented by Race 92, Chili Bowl live stream preview event. This is our third, well, really second year in a row, right, Scott? But technically third because we did do it one other time. That's right. On a different platform. So um, it's always a good time, and we are joined by Indy 500 veteran Robbie McGee. Robbie, it's always a pleasure. The last time I saw you, um, I was getting absolutely destroyed in go karts. So it's it's good to see you again. It's great to see you too, man. Well, that was a good time. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I don't get out as much as I'd like to, but you got me out there, and we had some fun. Yeah, I don't. I'll definitely be at um, St. Louis n- next year, but I don't know how we can really top that. So uh, maybe, maybe kind of hard to top that. Well, we can try. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, and I know, Robbie, you don't know a whole lot about Chili Bowl. Honestly, I don't either. I enjoy the racing, um, probably just like you do. Um, and I know you say you've never, so you've never oh. driven, obviously, a sprint car or midget. But I remember you talking about it on the podcast with you, and you saying, like, you would like the opportunity sometime to to drive one to just kind of get a feel of it yeah so i think it'd be totally fun i came up through the formula car ranks uh skip barber racing school um then formula 2000 uh, sort of road racing but they're formula cars like an indy car um where i totally respect and love the fact that there's american drivers coming up through sprint car you know that 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 uh kind of growth ladder into racing into indy car um i think indy car has finally done a slightly well, I don't think IndyCar has done a super great job of getting those guys in our cars. Um, other, you know, otherwise we, you know, Jeff Gordon, some of those other big names would uh, be more in IndyCar than NASCAR, I think. But um, it is what it is. That being said, like um, that level of horsepower on such a s- short wheelbase to me would just be fun. Like I'm not, I don't know that I'd ever go fast, be able to get going fast in one specifically, not being in a car in so <laughs> long. But I guarantee you, my grin would be ear to ear driving one of those things. <laughs> Well, you know, speaking of which, uh, announced this week, 2024, Kyle Larson, McLaren. Is he, yeah, that's cool. So I, I've got a funny, uh, uh, interesting story about Kyle. Uh, I was uh, NASCAR, what's the cup, or, sorry, whatever the cup cars are, are were in uh, it, it, uh, Gateway Motorsports Park, which is St. Louis, essentially. Um, my friend is the owner of the track, and um, I was at my kid's baseball game sitting sitting about 45 minutes from home and I saw um, Denny Hamlin posted something on Twitter. Anybody know of any good golf courses in St. Louis that, that, that Kyle and I can go play? Um, this was around 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning and I texted my buddy Curtis Francois who owns the track. I said, uh, hey, um, I don't know if that was a joke or whatnot because if you look at some of the replies to the tweets and you know how people like to give give those guys trouble and such. Um, but I said, I'm, I'm happy to take these guys out to Bell Reeve if, uh, you know, if, if it can be this afternoon. And sure enough, I was, I, I, uh, Kyle showed up. I'd never met him or Denny and uh, ended up playing 18 holes with him. And my wife went out a little early uh, to meet them since I wasn't going to be able to get there quite in time because I was coming from far away. But uh, I didn't know Kyle, but now I do. Uh, it was certainly, uh, certainly, certainly he's a good golfer. Um, and it was neat to kind of talk uh you know, talk with them. I, that's, I originally kind of joked and said, if you don't mind hanging around a guy that runs open wheel and doesn't rub, you know, that, where rubbing's not racing, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to host you guys out of Bell Reef. Uh, so I spent the afternoon with them and uh, had dinner and good time, actually. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, he uh, he he didn't run the Chili Bowl this year because he's out in Arizona uh, running dirt late models. I, they just had another kid and uh, it's a lot closer to home. So he, cause he just bought a place in Scottsdale, I guess. Right on. I recognize that guy that just got on. <laughs> I know. What's Look going on, bud? <laughs> hey, Jimmy. You guys doing all right? Hey, I'm yeah. doing great. Man, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It looks to me like Jimmy Kite's getting in shape for something. Uh-huh. It, looks like you're, it looks like Jimmy hey, Kite's uh, training a little bit for something. I had to after Aaron took me to the go-kart track a couple months ago. I was like, man, I did not realize I was this out of shape. I got to start getting back to the gym. <laughs> the, I got um, a feeling it's going to be over that uh, – run that sprint car later on this year. 
<laughs> yeah. We uh <laughs> we're kind of talking about like, I I still haven't talked to Donnie about it since that night, but it uh, I figure we'll go the first one, watch, see how it goes, and then then take it from there. But that those things are so much fun. You know, that's probably out of all the race cars I drove. You know, I, I really miss sprint cars. They're just so much fun. Sure. This uh this I, I don't know who's watching, who's not, but they're talking to the the probably the luckiest human being on earth besides whoever just won that 1.3 billion. They're talking to that kid who got uh, tossed out of the car the other night. Yeah, that's that was one of the craziest thing. You know, I, like that was normal back in you know the 60s and stuff where you know no cages and you see guys do that. But just you know with what we have nowadays, that is that was just nuts. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. I I've in all my years of racing, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, he's got the, his eyes. You know, he's got a black eye. He's got a cut. But man, the fact is, he not is talking. That, did he not go to the hospital? I mean, was he not completely knocked out, or was he awake? Oh, he was. He cut? was ragged all. I mean, he was knocked out. He was in the hospital for two days. I saw the picture. The only thing I can think of that that reminds me of was uh, Stan Fox with his legs hanging out the front of an Indy car. And um, oh yeah, it's just yeah. You're not supposed to separate from a car. That's always that's scary. Yeah. I don't know how we get ripped off. Were seatbelts loose, or what was the deal with that? Were they just not? Yeah, you know, I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to speculate. You hear rumors. Mm-hmm. I just I don't feel comfortable speculating in public <laughs> about what no. uh, may or may not happen. Yeah, I just don't know how that happened. I mean, I've and like you said, you know, you hear the stuff like arm restraints pulling the belts, you know, the the latch or whatever, and, and that's the one yeah. thing too that I didn't read. A lot of people don't know. And I didn't realize till some of my friends that run, you know, World of Outlaws told me about it like seven, eight years ago. Is now that you have these amazing full containment seats, you know, the ones that come over your shoulders and hold you in with those, like a lot of those guys aren't even using arm restraints anymore because, like, yeah. literally, there's no way possible to get your arms up and out because you're in there so tight and good. So it's like he might not even have had them. So we don't know yet what really happened. Yeah. I, I, I hear guys say that. You know, maybe it's true. I mean, I'm not a driver. And I, you know, my opinion doesn't matter. But boy, I, mm. I'd feel a lot more comfortable with my arms inside the car. Yeah, it's well, and that, like I said, that was the one thing. Those new seats. I mean, even that last year, I drove a must see. There, I mean, literally, there was no way you were if you have the right seat. You know, I had a Butler seat, and it was you know amazing built and stuff. And they're literally like my friends that were using them. I mean, so they're running world about how many years a, uh, uh, you know, how many races a year. And right. somebody mentioned it. at first, I'm like, no, that just sounds stupid, insane. And then the more I kind of got around, I'm like, I mean, you're, you're not kidding. There is literally no way this, you're not going anywhere. So, uh, I, right before they came on air, they announced that Damien Gardner is retiring after this Chili Bowl. Really? Yeah, this is it. So, if he doesn't make it out of this race here, this is it for Damien. How old is he? Uh, early 40s, I would say. I mean, Mid, maybe mid forties. You know, it's hard to tell. But uh, man, we did a lot of business with him. Is you know, we, you know, he was a good customer for a long time. Talked to him a lot. Um, to say I know him, I mean, I absolutely don't know him. But um, you know, he was. He's had a good career. You know, he's had a hell of a career. You know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so it's just. Uh, I mean, you don't think about those guys starting to retire, but. You know, they are. Yeah, it's it's crazy when you start getting to that age. Like you said, you start seeing everybody retiring. I remember when I was, you know, the new kid on the block, and now right. it's like people younger than me are retiring. It's like, oh my goodness, right. it's, I can't believe we're already to this point. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I. It's amazing how fast it goes. So before I you came wonder on, how. Oh, sorry. sorry go, no, go ahead. No, go ahead, Robbie. You're good. I was just going to say, I always look back. I had a pretty short career, but like when I was driving, I think wasn't Eddie Cheever driving when he was like 51 or was that 41, 51. Right. So yeah, that's still, was... I'm, I'm still not that old yet. I'm wondering like, there's just no way. I mean, like, man, my brain is so <laughs> cobwebbed up there. Like, I don't think it works that fast anymore. I don't know. I mean, you think you could go back and do it, Jimmy? I mean, uh, go not drive any Indy. I mean, it seems, seems scary. I mean, just one little, I mean, you got to be so precise at Indy. Matt, especially. Just seeing on and then you know still doing it at you know our age it's it's and i you know being that they're doing it 
every race i could see you know they never had the drop off but it's like once you leave it it just there's yeah, no way you can get back just stuff happens so fast yeah yeah and his his workout routine's insane mm -hmm. i mean you know he yeah, yeah mine's he not quite really up to that. <laughs> yeah i mean he literally does the iron man's and i mean you know that dude there is a stud man yeah i think more i mean and and as jimmy said once you get out of it i mean to, to me the challenge of being older and trying to do it is is, is, is the speed of your brain. I mean, if, if you, I guess if you never lose, lose that processing power, I mean, like, I think I've talked with you guys the first time you get an Indy car, first time I got in an Indy car, I was just hanging on for dear life, having fun, but then your brain speeds up to it. And then all of a sudden on a short straightaway, you're looking at all your gauges, you know, what's going on around you. I don't know how hard that would be to get back, but that's what, you, that's what I think you lose uh, at an older age. Cause I think who knows when you're, capacity starts becoming diminished but just being away from it even when you're at full capacity it's tough coming back into it well i mean you know for either one of you guys or both of you guys i mean at what age do you think that that the do, do you think that fall off starts and you're but you're so experienced you don't people don't notice it well you well, know that may they fall don't off, know but it. you're yeah and you're, but your your experience can you know kind of offset that i mean experience is obviously anything is, is is huge i don't know what i don't know what that age is i mean i could say yeah, that i drove yeah. a car very differently when i was 27 than i was 32 and that's I, I still think i was sharp then but i didn't just didn't really want to die so uh i changed my changed my <laughs> change the line <laughs> i took when i'm going side by side with someone <laughs> yeah and that's i agree and, and you know a lot of drivers think differently you know and some of it is just you know when when we're in our twenties and stuff, you know, you don't have families yet and you just, you don't care about right. anything. You, you don't care about dying. You don't care. I mean, I remember so many times going out of the front straightaway to Indy I made my peace with God. If I didn't make it out of turn one, I didn't make it out of turn one, you know, but once you get older, you start thinking about other, other things in your life. And to me, it's whether that's 25 or whether that's 45, you, when you start thinking about those other things in your life going into turn one then to me that's yeah. when you start slowing down and who knows when that magical number is but it's just when you start thinking about other stuff and that's to me when you start having that little hesitation and just that little hesitation slows you down mm. that's right. exactly right and jimmy i remember there was one year where you tested your theory about talking to god every time on the front straightaway what was that <laughs> was it that, that would be my first year there <laughs> <laughs> That was you tested, Andy you Evans told me. If I don't, yeah, Andy Evans told me if I don't sit on the pole or, or win the Indy 500 that year, we weren't going to Texas or any other race that year. And by God, he he held true to his word. We didn't go to another race after that. <laughs> what, whose car was that? I don't remember. I remember it was purple with that yellow was, wheels. Yeah, that was the Royal Purple car. The Andy Evans he had bought. Um, you know, Dick Simon's team. Oh, it was, okay, and, that's uh, right. yeah. yeah, yeah, that was that team. And it, it literally, I mean, he owned. He owned a top fuel team. He owned half of Brett Lodine's cup team. He owned the sports car series back then. And it was like literally right after the Indy 500 that year, he stayed around for about another couple of months and just, just sold oh. everything. I mean, just, you basically just got rid of everything. He was done, but he was one of Bill Gates's financial advisors. So I guess he just kind of must've just got <laughs> bored and moved on to his next hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So before um <clears throat> before you came on, Jimmy, we were talking to Robbie about how he's he's never driven like sprint car midget. Um but I mean have you have you driven anything like on dirt, Robbie, before? No, I mean I grew up riding motor uh, motocross, and, motocross. Uh, not 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 racing, but just riding a lot and go-karts, not but not go-karts like racing go-karts, just go-kart, you know, just sure. recreational go-karts. So I've been driving stuff. I know what dirt feels like. Um, you know, Jimmy, I was just telling them like of all the things that I've driven and haven't driven to me that much horsepower on a short wheelbase i don't know if i'd be fast or not but i'd be grinning ear to ear that's for sure sprint cars are, are bonkers and i mean even even the midgets when when you get them on the it, it's such a distinct deal too when you get them on the short tracks for as little as they are they have so much horsepower to know something that small and that tiny you can do wheelie stands is crazy but it's so that's, much fun yeah. and then to know that you can also take those exact same cars and, and put them on a, on a one mile you know, track and run them and, and still try to keep them stable on that. I mean, just what the spectrum you could run those cars on is just absolutely insane. Yeah. I always thought it was nuts when I'd see those sprint cars or ovals or silver crown or whatever, whatever kind on these big, some, uh, paved tracks. I mean, it's like, is that safe? Like, <laughs> it doesn't look like <laughs> it. 
well, like you said, we we didn't we didn't think about that part. It was like we just we saw it paid whatever the curse was, and you know we we That's wanted so to good. win. We we didn't care about it was safe or not. We just wanted to beat the next guy. <laughs> what do you think would be for someone like Robbie if he were to ever drive, you know, a sprint car midget? Like, what what would be the first like a micro or like what would be the easiest kind of thing to? And we've me and Scott have talked about this before. But what do you think would be like the easiest car to kind of? get alert you know just kind of get a learning curve for it, it just to kind of learn i mean yes 600s are, are a really good you know starting mm-hmm. point just to to let you kind of feel what it feels like you know to get into a corner and you know those things don't run on huge tracks so to, to kind of feel what the you know car is going to do getting into the corner or you know and it you know a lot of it changes too whether it's a heavy track or a slick track or a bumpy track or a smooth track and, and you can learn that a lot in, in the 600s and, and you're not you still get yourself in trouble, obviously, but you're not going to, you know, if you get upside down, you're not going to end up going the length of a straightaway or, or something crazy like that. You know, it just a little tip over, get back over and, you know, get back going. But um, when that, you know, even the, the three, once you get doing with that, now they have so many options with sprint cars, you know, 360s and 305s and, um, you know, all that stuff you can get going to just when you finally get behind the wheel of 410, that's, that's just something that's to this day, I will, I will never forget that. That was some of the, the most fun times I had, you know, was getting to do that on, on my off weekends. And those things are just an absolute blast. I say, I say, just, just dive in, <laughs> the, dive in the deep end. Wing this, this is all incredibly hypothetical. This is there's, I'm, this right. ain't, this not, not going to happen, but it's hypothetical. It's <laughs> interesting to hear. <laughs> so again, I don't know who's watching this now, but, uh, I guess they do a winner's uh, a winner's painting for each night. So they, they've really? got a, a paintings up front of every night, the winners from each night. That's, That's awesome. Cool. You That's can buy awesome. prints. I can't believe- they've got the, they got the original, then you can buy prints of it. I can't believe how much it's changed you know, over the years. Like when I went once, you know, got to see it and watch it. It was awesome. And then I was like, well, I'm not coming back to I'm running. And then I finally, you know, it took me a while to get back. Actually, I had, you know, ran a couple of indie, you know, Indy 500s and stuff to get back. But I finally got back and ran in 03. And it was back then it was, you know, a, God, I can't believe there's over 200 cars right. here, you know, and right. now it's just just bonkers what it is nowadays. If you just ran cars one... today. They would they would consider it a failure if it was 200 cars today. Right. <laughs> right. You How many Chili Bulls did you run in, Jimmy? Just one? Yep, just just the one. It uh, wanted to go back and just for some reason, you know, never got another opportunity or chance. But that was, it was a fun one. I mean, I remember it was just the whole experience of my prelim night. I mean, maybe I didn't get a chance because I screwed up on my prelim night. You know, we, we ended up in the B main. I, I was going for a, a transfer spot, and I was up on the top, coming off the floor pretty good, and the, the guy on the bottom missed the bottom, and I swear it looked like he had his reverse lights on coming back up at me. And I had a good run off of four and ended up going over his right retire. So that set me yeah. back. You know, that was the end of our prelim night. So then that put me back in one of the E mains, um, you know, for, for my night. And we just, you know, we weren't even able to get out of that. And that was, you know, seeing the, the run the guy had earlier on, the seven features, I mean, I just couldn't imagine yeah. that many. We were astonished the night I ran. I remember Sammy Swindell was started in one of the E's. He booked all the way through and ended up, I think it was halfway through the A main, he was leading you know, till his motor blew up. And that was one of the craziest runs I've ever seen out there. I think, I'm not sure if that's the year Bill started behind him in that E, or in that e main or not. One of those years he started behind him in one of those, those E mains. That, uh, I, I have an H main winner's plaque somewhere out in the garage. I, mean, I should, I should have brought it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome to have. And like you said, now, nowadays, I mean, that's got, that's half the field, you know, still that's behind the field. Yeah. Somewhere out there, there's the H main winners plaque. That's that's awesome. Oh man, that's so funny. That, hey, Robbie, uh, me and Aaron were talking when uh, when you come to Indy, so we can go to Fast Times. <laughs> is that the go kart place? Yes, Indoor it karting. is. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I we'll have to make that happen. I I did a karting thing with Aaron last summer for Gateway, and it was uh, it was fun actually. It's like I, it was, I mean. Not actually as a, as a surprise. It's always fun every time I do it. And uh, I, I'll come up there, run with you guys. The pro- problem is, like, I still have the same streak of competitiveness. <laughs> like, and, and <laughs> I didn't. I never know what to expect. And every time, yeah. I, last time I went out there I was with a group of guys, uh, 
in the St. Louis YPO chapter. And they, I guess, I don't know why I agreed to do it, but I was like a mark because I didn't really have anything to, to win there. I only had something to lose. I was e- either going to lose to someone who's not a race car driver or, and if I win, it's like, well, duh, who's a race car driver sort of thing. So I think I punted right. somebody so high up into the plastic. It's <laughs> 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 like, sorry, man. Like that's how it works. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get out of the way, not, man. We're we're not, going. Not losing to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we um no, we we have several IRL guys we could probably I mean you, Donnie, um, probably a couple others too, so we could have a hell of a race. IRL reunion race. Yeah, no chance of anyone getting hurt there. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not at all. Yeah, those, hey, no those things always yet. go perfect. That's when it I did. gets fun too, you know, like when you when you first you know, when Aaron had talked about it, the first time I went there, you know, it was just me and car wise. So I was just, you know, you're kind of just, well, I was basically falling out of the saddle halfway through. So I wasn't even worried about time anymore, but you know, you're just watching the clock and trying to, you know, turn the fastest lap you can. Second time I went back, it was, uh, you know, Jeff Dodge was there who runs, you know, a bunch of sprint car stuff and some mini lights. And then Beachler was there. And it was, you know, first when I showed up, I was, all I was worried about was my time. I come down the straightaway and look at my time. And then me and Donnie got to racing. And that was all it took for the rest of the session. I didn't care about time. It was just me and Donnie messing around, trying to you know, mess with each other. It's like, we're, we're killing our time, but I don't care. This is too much fun. Well, That's I think fun. you were at that um, that vintage race we did at the Speedway, weren't you? Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. I think that's yeah, that an example of how, how that could – it was fun, but it's an example of how things could go wrong driving other people's equipment. Yes. Um, yeah, that's – I mean, like <laughs> – we were it was like i don't know i was in like a 1969 camaro i it, it was fun i'd never driven the speedway road course but uh i mean there there was some there was some some heavy racing going on that i don't think was maybe not intended but it was still fun even though al jr won because his car had a thousand horsepower more than everybody else but uh, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was fun yeah yes didn't, it was it, didn't who got their who got their leg broke doing that was it? Uh, was it? I don't think uh, it happened the year I did it. Um, somebody, did somebody got their, somebody got their leg or leg or pelvis broke running that SVRA deal. Um, At Indy. Yeah. Really? Was it? Yeah, a it was uh, one of the fe- it was one of the females. Um. In the in the charity one? race or one of the other races during the weekend? I know well, I, I is one of the other races during the weekend. Oh, okay. I was like, I know in the, the charity one they had with us, you know, I, I didn't remember that. I just, I remember every, because I did it like, I think three years. And I remember in the driver's meeting every morning, the only thing they showed, and I won't call out any names, was two different drivers coming down the front straightaway, starting the race. It would just barrel into, and you just wiped out, cleaned out a bunch of other race cars. And they're like, so one, don't do this because these cars aren't really repairable because there's not parts to fix them anymore. And two, this is why we're going to let the car owners start the race because that many old retired IndyCar guys going into turn one just wasn't a really good thing. <laughs> well, I mean, all, well, all you would have ever had to have done was watch Fastmasters to understand that yeah. you don't do that. <laughs> my guys so like, hey, man, have fun, but don't wreck my yeah, car, absolutely. car, please. I'm like, okay, well, right. that's my priority, not to wreck this gentleman's car and still have fun. But <laughs> <laughs> those, poor, those poor Jaguars were destroyed, man. I and totally forgot about that deal. series until you just yeah. said that. That was my first, <laughs> I think first year I was up here running, you know, came up. To, I just graduated high school, come up to run Thursday Night Thunder, and that series was out here. And I was like, you know, all my heroes and stuff, and watching them wipe those things out, I was like, those are expensive cars that they just killed. I, Parnelli broke a rib. Oof. Crash broke a rib. Competitiveness, oh, just like Robbie said, you know, you, you get into something, you're competitive, you, no matter what it is, you, you want to win. That's exactly Days of Thunder, right. man. The rental cars, right? It just doesn't matter what it is. It's be lawnmower, and right. still be racing. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I think of Jimmy. You're like number three now on our fast times board, I believe, three or four. So you're, um, I mean, you're beating some some current guys. Let's well, finally after, after that first one. Like I said, that, that that first one, I just kind of was like, and that's you know, you give some, you know, you give Donnie a second chance or whatever, and it, you know, probably be right there where I'm at. It just you know, I hadn't been there in so many years. I really haven't been in anything. You know, even even when I was doing my Dodge stuff, once COVID hit, you know, we got so busy at our shop. I mean, I literally haven't driven anything in, in several years. And uh, just to get back up there and do that again, it was just so much fun. But it was just kind of just 
getting my feet back underneath me. And so I was like, you know, we talked to you. I sent you that text when I, you know, I know we had talked when I got home and I was like, I thought about it my whole drive home. And I was like, God, that was fun. I really missed that. I think we got to do this again. And then now you may be driving a sprint car. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Yep. And it's those cars. Like I said, they're so much fun. If I do, I do. It'd be awesome. If not, I mean, I had a, I had a great run, but it, it would be fun to, to hop back in one you know hopefully that works out where, where we get to because those those cars are a, a lot of fun did we get yeah, a clear did. by the way i was going to say did we get a clear by the wife yet because i think you talked to her about it she looked at me <laughs> <laughs> well that, that, that's co- hey silence is compliance yep, <laughs> that's right it's one where you beg for uh, forgiveness versus ask for right. permission it, Boy, the track, man, guys... they, got the, they got the cushion pushed right on the fence of this place right now. Who is it? Be, yeah, you got to be really careful around right the top. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you ever go out to watch Chili Bowl, Robbie? I've never been. I think it'd be cool. It'd be fun. I mean, but again, I I started the show. I don't. I just don't know much about that type of racing at all. But again, I, that doesn't remove any sort of desire i would have to be around it or i will tell you i've my only exposure and this is the this is the dumb formula indy card or formula guy that did this uh at indy i think maybe it was at irp or somewhere um during the month of may they had a race that i went out to and uh it was dirt somewhere might have been anderson i don't remember where it was but someone told me to go stand up and look at the race on the outside of the fence and i'm like oh okay and i mean i got <laughs> covered <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah. You, you've never been to one of these before. So I, I know, I know enough. I know that much not to do that, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think the rate, it's just amazing racing. Um, it's, it's super fun to watch. I mean, being something that it's, that I don't know much about, I, it, you know, when you don't understand something, it's even that much more fascinating. Right. So um, I love watching. I think it's cool. I've never I've been penciled in. The, I've officially announced that I've penciled in possibly going next year. So, but notice I said I penciled it in. Yeah, I think you said that last year too. No, I didn't. I didn't make a proclamation last year. I've made a proclamation, but I've left myself an out. Always have an out. Always have an out. Always, first... always find a window. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That was the the first dirt midget race I had ever been to in person, and it was. Oh really? I, I feel like it was ninety. Or is it either 93 or 94 I went to it? I'm thinking it was 94, though. But it was the – and I just remember, I mean, it, I was 17, 18 years old, and it still is like that vivid of a memory. I remember it was uh, Andy Hillenberg ended up winning the race that year, but it was him and P.J. Jones was in Paige, his team car, PJ. and then Paige was in the, the Black 71 car. And those three guys watching the wheelies and the crossing over back and forth for the lead – you know, for the, the the whole feature of that race, yeah. I mean, I just to this day, I was like, that was one of the best races I'd ever seen in my life. I was like, this is yeah, amazing. It, I've got it, to do this. It really was. You know, and people like PJ went to the back on the first lap. He got back up, was up back up front within 10, 15 laps. Mm-hmm. But the like I said, I said the crazy thing about that, it's not so you take them, and then you had Ron Schumann, Steve Kinzer, um, obviously Andy Hillenberg. You had Stevie Reeves, which today people don't remember how great a dirt race car driver Stevie Reeves was. Yeah, he was in Raleigh's car that year. Yeah, and it that was a hell of a show, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, PJ threw the kitchen sink at Paige, and Paige had something for him every time. Yep. But then um, Hatton and Schrader got together and spun, kind of blocked the track, and Paige started to get her woed down, and PJ couldn't get her stopped. And both of them crashed. Yep. Yeah, that was, was an amazing race. I just remember that. I mean, I was still in high school then, and that was like literally I could not wait to get graduated. That for the rest of that spring in the in the graduation for school, all I could think of was when's graduation day. And, and it was literally two days later. I was up here trying to find a ride, you know, for Thursday Night Thunder. And that was one of the biggest starters of me that year was, you know, I've got to get up north. I've got to get one of these cars. It was just too much fun. I've I've got to do that. And speaking of Chili Bull races that are that are known think, for their history, uh, we've got Donnie Beachler on who won the next year in 1995, and that's considered probably the greatest Chili Bull ever. Of course it is. 
There you go. <laughs> yeah. How's everybody what, doing? What the, what'd you, what, did you come out of the, the back of the sea? Is that what the deal was? I, no, I came from uh, a B. It was okay, the so you second came... B. Okay. Yeah. I think it was second row outside or second row inside, somewhere around there. Then we started 16th in the main and then uh, went from there. We're getting ready to watch somebody who I would have penciled in as a possible winner miss the show in uh, Buddy Kofoid. He's 13th with I five know, that's laps what I was, And he just got upside that's down. That's what I was watching. Yep. And it's all over for him. Man, that is hard to believe. Did he get upside down? Just got upside down. Oh. On the back of the straightaway. No, that's too bad. Yep. Their car crashed in front of him. He had nowhere to go. Mm. It's tough. You have to have luck to, to to make it through the Chili Bowl. I'll tell you, you can have a good car, just send a great driver, and if you don't have some luck on your side, it's a struggle. Oh, yeah, a- absolutely. When would you say, Donnie, in 1995, did you realize you actually had a shot to win the Chili Bowl? Well, um, I didn't have that good a car up top. Um, Schumann and, and Billy Boat were running one and two, and I kind of was working my way through the through the crowd there. And uh, of course, you know everybody's up top or on the bottom, and so I just I actually just started trying to go through the middle, which the car seemed to like that. And it wasn't probably until oh maybe ten to go uh, when I actually went to the middle and slid uh, Boat. And the car just stuck, and I thought, you know, this we might be able to get around Schumann, too. And we didn't have any yellows, so that helped me out. But um, it wasn't probably until the very end there that we knew, or that I knew that I, I had this thing. So it was it was pretty amazing. Was that was that a Keith's prepared car, too, when, for Zernan? No, I'll tell you what. It, it was kind of funny the way all that happened was because Keith and I went out to California together. Um, right. And – you know, Keith was a mechanic and I was a driver. And then he was there just for a couple months. And then he ended up uh, going up to John Lawson up in Fresno. Oh, and yeah. so I was, I was kind of left there. Uh, George was like, well, here, you got to put these cars together. So um, <laughs> I had a, a Gary and myself and a couple of guys, we put the cars together because we had a two car team. We had uh, Frankie Kerr running with us. But, um, you know, he didn't come out to California to put the cars together. We just took him to Tulsa. But, um, yeah, so we went there kind of on our own, and uh, Frankie was with us. Uh, we, we did a little setup exchange. And, um, you know, I think the, the advantage that I had was that they have a curfew, so you can't, you know, they had to get the, the, the A-main started by a certain time. Well, they were running late. And they usually prepare the track, you know, before the A main and they didn't do that. I mean, as soon as I came off the ramp, uh, after my B, which I was the second B. So I had to, I pulled up into the pits and they changed tires, put some fuel in. I didn't even get out of the car and, uh, and then pushed me back down the ramp. So, uh, I, I had a little bit of uh, what the track felt like. So, you know, but still coming from the back, it was, it was tough and, you know, dodging everybody. And, uh, again, you, you have to have, uh, a little bit of lady luck on your side there. So, um, it, it was just sure. our night. It was, um, it was great. Yeah. Hey guys, I got to jump. I, I'm going to say hi, say hi to Donnie. Donnie, it's Robbie. I don't know if you can see me here, but, uh, good to hear hey. you, your voice. And, uh, yeah, good we'll to see hear you. you. Yeah. Good to hear you. See you, see you soon back at Indy, maybe here at that, uh, next deal. Jimmy, good to see you. Thanks, guys. Sorry, I got to jump. I got to take some kids to go play hockey. So, okay, uh, okay Robbie. Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Robbie. Hey, thanks, Robbie. Nice yeah. seeing Bye, you, guys. Good, bud. Thank you. Always. Thanks, guys. Bye bye. And whenever you need to jump out, too, Donnie, I know you're at McGilvery's right now. Um, and then if anyone's in the Indy area and you want to go watch Chili Bowl, um, McGilvery's and Speedway is having a um, Chili Bowl party. So, I'm actually going to go there after this. Well, we're trying to get hey. the Chili Bowl on right now. Oh, they don't they, have it on uh, yet. They, I think they. Well, I think they don't have flow, so oh, I, they're trying so to. I think as soon as I get off the phone, I'm going to cast it to one of the televisions to see if we can watch it here. But I, I think they do have Mav, but I'm not sure what time Mav 
Do they pick so up at eight I o'clock think, or is Mav so even I think, still? I think Mav's done with it. Yeah, for this year, I think everything's oh. on flow this year. So I think it all has well, to go through flow. Yeah, so we may have to. They may have to cast so, it. So if they're coming to watch it, like I said, we. I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to have it. Uh, I'll see if I can get it on one of the televisions with my, you know, with my phone. But uh, uh, I know I thought the same thing. I thought, well, I'll get here and and watch it. But um, uh, Billy Throckmorton and Stephanie, they're here and they're like, they don't have uh, they don't have flow. So um, I was watching it on my phone before I called you guys. So the, the um, you know, both of you guys could really answer this. Because uh, you have similar backgrounds, obviously, and we kind of mentioned it a moment ago. We we're talking about Larson going to run the 524. What um, I mean, what is he legitimately looking at there? I mean, what you know? I mean, do you? I mean, what kind of preparation do you think he needs to be doing before that? Right, Don. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, I'm sure Jimmy, we, we both probably feel the same is it is hard to prepare for the 500 or Indy cars in general. I mean, they're just a different, I haven't run stock cars, so I can't compare the two, but um, it just, it's, it's hard to prepare for something like that. The speeds are more than what you've ever run. And uh, the, the cars are, are totally different from what we've ever run. You can't really compare, you know, our midgets or our silver crown to to the indie cars and i think he's it's just like anything else he's gonna have a learning curve there at the beginning but i think i heard that they're they're gonna do quite a bit of testing with him so and yeah. i'm sure jimmy might feel the same it's fortunately indy is one of those races too where you get so many days of practice and you get to you know you can jump out in the car on a on a windy day or when when the wind's a crosswind in the short shoot and, and a headwind down the front stretch or a tailwind down the front stretch. It's not, you know, a lot of tracks you go to, it's a two hour, you know, an hour, two hour practice session. And then you're qualifying, you're in the race and that's all you get. At least Indy, not only with all his testing, he's going to get, but even during the month, he's going to get some full tank runs and some drafting runs mm-hmm. and all that. So, I mean, that the, the kid's so good anyway and talented, but even the stuff that testing won't, give him you know running in the traffic and stuff he'll still get to do that during the month of may because of all those practice days things and they'll and they'll also you know i'm sure they have a several car team they'll feed off of each other so he won't get in a car that um that he'll have to figure out by himself i mean he'll have uh, the engineers from other cars on the team and they'll transfer that information to his car and he'll he'll be fast He, he really will yeah, no, I, I feel it'd be fast. I, I'm i concerned about him busting his ass just, you know, as that place does. I mean, that's just what it what it does, you know. I'm just that, you know, it <laughs> catches a cross rent, win wrong or something. But, I mean, I think he'll do fine. I, I just, I you know, it's just such a different animal. Yeah, well, you can, I mean, the best of us bust our asses there. You right, know? I mean, it's, absolutely. It is just there's no track <laughs> that I've ever run that is the speedway, and it's just you can't you can hardly take anything from any other tracks and and use it you know at the speedway. I think the the closest thing that I found on some of our cars and, and the testing that I did with with AJ Foyt is believe it or not the Phoenix a setup at Phoenix is the old close Phoenix. to the setup that you run. Yeah, yes, the old one um, is what they would pretty close run at the speedway so uh, hmm. but that's about it <laughs> because it was so flat turn three and four yeah it, it felt a lot yeah. like yeah. huh I, did, I, I didn't realize i knew i knew that people did a lot of testing there but i didn't realize that they felt it was that close um and here here's a question for jimmy and donnie and, and this is something that's kind of changed over the years i know with um you know, Larson, when he was with Ganassi, he he didn't do a lot of the. I mean, he did some of the dirt stuff, but obviously um, when he got let go from Ganassi and then with Hendrick, he was racing a lot more. Do, do you guys think that, you know, jumping in different cars like that on a weekly basis and then going, you know, into NASCAR, IndyCar, do you think that creates more of a distraction for a driver or a benefit? Um, because I've definitely heard both sides to that. I recently thought it was a huge benefit, but- even... 
when I was, you know, doing the IndyCar stuff on any off weekend I had, I was trying to either be in a, you know, in a crown car or a wing sprint car, or just anything I could get in. It was just anytime you're in a race car, you're learning. It doesn't matter if it's dirt payment, a, a late model, a sprint car, NASCAR, IndyCar, you're, you're learning every single chance you can get in a car. So I just, I don't think it's ever bad to be in a race car. No, I, I agree 100%. And also, is your acclimation to speed. Um, you know, if you are off for a while, once you, once you've acclimated yourself to 220, 230, um, you know, it, it keeps your reflexes up and, uh, and as long as you can keep acclimated to the high speeds and stuff, it, you know, if you're off for a couple of weeks or whatever, you got to get back into that acclimation. Um, and I think he'll, he, he will surprise you. I think I think he's got a great car he's with a great team. Oh, and yeah. I think he will be just fine. Yeah, I think I think he's going to do do great as well. I mean, he does great in anything he sits in. His learning curve mm-hmm. is very short. I agree. But yeah, Donnie, whenever you need to, you probably have a bunch of people wanting to watch Chili Bowl. So whenever you need to get off and get the cast, so yeah, hey, yeah. Before we'll... you before you jump off, who uh, have you watched it all this week? Oh yeah, I've been you... watching it. Yeah. So who yeah. who who's your pick for tonight? Because I've got three guys that I feel is the three to, that the winner is going to come from. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, Thorson's is really good, and I I would probably Justin Grant's going to be tough. Um, yeah. But I, I tell you what, though it it can be anybody. Uh, it's anybody's game. You know, it depends on track conditions and. Um, getting through traffic and, uh, and then if you're leading, get through lap traffic. I mean, it's just, it, it, this is probably one of the hardest ones to pick. Um, you just don't know. And, and no matter how fast you look throughout the week, um, you know, if you don't, um, if you don't find the groove or, uh, whatever, you're just, it's just, it's a hard pick right now, but those are the two guys that I think will, uh, put on a good show. I feel like. Thorson, Rico, and CV had the best cars. I mean, I felt like they those cars looked the best, and I thought I thought right behind that was Baston and Justin. And uh, yeah, I, I, I but I feel those, those three I mentioned. I feel like the winner will probably be Thorson, uh, but I think it'd be those three, and then I don't know. I mean, you know, J- Justin. Is somewhat due, right? I mean, as much as you can yeah, be due well, to win a race, but well, I'll tell you, I I went there probably thirteen years, I think, maybe ten years, eleven years, and even watching throughout the years, I can't remember it ever taking rubber, you know. And then Not last like night that. I watched it and, it, and it took rubber. So once it takes rubber, they're locked down. So who's ever in run at that point you know it's going to be hard to pass them uh if that track uh, if the track takes rubber again um and they're running you know 350 cars on that thing today they did have it pretty wet but it's going to be interesting to see what happens you know 25 30 laps into the main tonight right did you like when you would run of course every night's different i realize this is probably too Mm -hmm. generic of a question but when you would run there, would, did you find the track would blow off more the later in the week? Like it would it blow off quicker later in the week? Um, not necessarily. I mean, they're preparing that thing each and every day. So it's a new track, right. you know, from the beginning every day. Um, you know, this is the worst day because, like I said, they started at, what, 9 o'clock right. this morning? 9 a.m. And they're just. Yeah, and I don't know, is this the same dirt that we've run on all these years? Do they I think it is. store this dirt somewhere, or is this, uh, you know? I, I think, I mean, I they really may have replaced works. it once or twice, but I think it's, I think they store it, from what I've been told, yeah, I could be wrong, but they, I think they store it on, on, on the fairgrounds there. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. I, like I said, I, um, I think that, you know, they're going to cut it up again, you know, for right. uh, for the main tonight, uh, and they'll water it, and, and it'll be a it'll be a different track. But you know, ten, fifteen, eighteen laps into that thing, it'll blow off, and uh, it'll create its own grooves. So right. 
Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to let you go. Uh, they uh, are yelling at me right now, but uh, <laughs> I will, uh, I'll catch up with you hey. later on. Jimmy, awesome brother. Just to talk to you again. Good seeing you, Donnie. Tell the family hi for me. I sure will. Hey. I sure will. Thanks, guys, for having me on. Hey, Thanks. thank you so much, Donnie. We appreciate it. Uh, and seriously, I mean, just uh, amazing <clears throat> driver. And thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. We got to protect our record at the Chili Bowl. So we've got uh, it stood for 28 years. So hopefully we can hang on to it again tonight. So uh, <laughs> we've come from the from the furthest back to win it. So right. hopefully we can hang on to that. So alrighty, thank you guys so much. Take care, Donnie. Nice talking to you guys. Thanks, Donnie. Alrighty, guys. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, Donnie, uh, to go sure. back to to go back to the Larson thing. And yep. it's funny that he's getting to come from the stock cars to the Indy cars. And you're right. It's the, the one thing is when you get an Indy car after driving something like that, the Indy car stuck and it feels so good. And it's like, oh my God, this is the perfect car. It's it's great. The only problem with an Indy car is they feel great <laughs> until they're out of control. And there's not a, oh, it's, a, you know, it's loose. You know, you don't hang those things out. It's like, you know, it's first thing that bit me was, oh, this feels good. This is perfect. This is great. Why am I backwards in the wall? What happened? You know, right. I didn't even, I didn't even get, you know, a, a message. It just snapped on me. And that's, that's something that, you know, you just really got to be careful of in those. Well, I mean, you know, obviously I have no idea what it's like to drive an Indy car there, but from the outside looking in, it, it looks to me like you, you get to run so many laps here that it can lull you to sleep because you're burning lap after lap after lap. And you, know, you kind of get into this rhythm. Then all of a sudden you get a crosswind or maybe you get a, a, a you know, a, a push down the straightaway. And all of a sudden it's, you know, like you said, it's just backwards in the fence. Fortunately, I mean, he's, and it can bite in him, just like, you know, Kurt Busch sure. had a great year, the ran, you know, the year Kurt ran, but it was what on that final car day, you know, not car day, but mm -hmm. that Monday warm up thing they had, you know, it bit him, you know, coming off a of turn two. He had a great race well, that day, but I think it's bit it was everybody because I of mean, that day. Yeah. You yeah, definitely right. learn something every single day you're on the track out there. And like you said, it even just watching the the wind socks, you know, like you go down the front straightaway, wind might be going one direction. You go down the back straightaway, it might be going something different into turn three. And you you have to pay attention to that. If not, it, it'll it definitely bite you. But Larson is so good, and he, he's so sharp. Yeah. I mean, I, I think he'll be on top of that, and everybody's going to tell him you know, what I'm telling you guys now. I mean, he's. I don't think there's really anything that he's not going to be prepared for except for just the experience of it and learning, you know, what right? – the, the biggest thing is just on race day, you know, that – all the all the hot dog wrappers that's the the biggest thing you know on race day because right. practice days you know they'll stop the track and clean it for for one hot dog wrapper race day you go into the short shoot and there's there's hundreds of them it's like what happened <laughs> i don't think it's that i i think the last few years it hasn't been that bad but yeah no. I mean, you look at some of those old videos it's like my goodness my rookie year when i went through the short shoot it was you know we, we'd ran for a little while on the green and then our first yellow I remember it was like when we fired back up for the restart and we hit that short shoot and it stirred everything up. And I just saw wrappers and stuff going everywhere. I was like, my God, where did all this come from? Where's our yellow for, you know, track inspection. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, you know, what's amazing is, is <clears throat> I can't think of Harley. I mean, maybe there's been once or twice uh, getting a beer can on the track. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I mean, we we have you know rabbits, plenty of rabbits, plenty of squirrels. Yeah, there's a video animals. of a dog. There's a dog. There's a video of the dog for in the 500. I think it was in the 90s. Yep my my rookie that. year. Oh really? My rookie year it was it was 98. We were uh, we were in our cars, strapped in, and I remember them saying, you know, I'm waiting on them to say start your engines, and they kept saying there's a delay, and I'm like, what's the delay? And they're like, there's <laughs> there's a dog in turn four, and I was like, a dog. And what was bad? I had you know, hydrated a lot that morning. Uh -huh. And this was the first time where I was like sitting there and this delay was cutting into the race. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm finally going to have a story. Everybody asked me, what do you do if you have to go to the bathroom? And I never had an answer because I never did. And I was like, I have to go. What? Oh no, I'm finally going to have a story and tell them what to do. And so it was delayed probably 10, 15 minutes. And they finally got the dog off the track. He came into the, I think, pit area and they got him off the track. 
And it was so crazy because as soon as they said, start your engines, I never thought about it again for 200 laps. <laughs> never, oh, never so crossed funny. my mind again. Well, it's, it's better than what happened to Stewart at Watkins Glen. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah. yeah. I think that was Watkins Glen. It was. It was. It was, it was the night after. Yep. It was Watkins Glen. It was the night after they had won the Knoxville Nationals. <laughs> oh, there's a shocker. Yeah. <clears throat> Jesus. At um, yeah, man, this chili bowl deal, it, it's uh, it's so tough, right? It's nice to talk to somebody like Donnie who, who's won it, yeah. that can really speak to um, speak to it, you know? Yep, yeah, he got through it so many years, and he he knows, you know, I my experience was fun, but it was one year, and it was you know, my you know, my heat race, my B main, my prelim night, and then the you know, the, the E-Main, and that was basically it for, for the final night. And the rest, I was just, you know, sitting there watching. And it was it was fun. It was great. And I was glad I got to do it. But nothing like, you know, Donnie getting run all those years. And like you said, he's, you know, to this day, like he said, you know, he, he came from the furthest back ever to win that race, which is, you know, that's saying something. Because once you get into that A, any car in that race can win it. And to know that sure. he came the furthest back to win, that that's awesome. Man, I forgot that Frankie Kerr was his teammate. Boy, I, you know, I don't know Frankie Kerr, but – Man, that guy must be sharp. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he was a, he was in charge of those, you know, like Robbie Gordon's NASCAR deal and some other NASCAR deals, and won so many sprint car races. And that that man, McBride that soft car back when he ran out with All Stars. Yeah. I mean, that was a popular, popular car. He was he was a fast man. <laughs> he took some of my money too at uh, uh, Dio's Racing Fest. Did he? he got like a, he got a hundred bucks off us off us there. <laughs> you and him are in the same club. <laughs> he uh no he the yeah i don't even know what he does now i don't, I don't know who was last time i checked he was a crew chief on somebody's cup team yeah i don't know if he's retired or not yeah he's he's uh man he's good mm -hmm. i didn't the, know he was um, doing the nascar stuff until i you know i knew frankie from you know the the sprint car stuff and all of a sudden you know i saw because it wasn't they changed it wasn't frankie Kerr anymore it was frank Kerr, and i'm like well, i wonder if it's any relation to frankie Kerr. And it's, right so it's the same <laughs> same guy he's from out where did where is he from was he from ohio or pennsylvania i, I don't think remember ohio i think it's ohio me to that yeah because i think the i think the mcbride shaw car is out of ohio mm -hmm. yes was out of ohio i should say yeah. Jeff Gordon, one of the few rides he got fired from. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember they, uh, the year Jeff was driving that car, they came, you know, living down in Georgia in the spring that the All-Stars would always come in and run a track there called Dixie Speedway. It was just the north okay. side of Atlanta. And we, uh, we had a, uh, Jeff was running the, that, that car and, Hewitt was there, and Hugh, I love Hewitt telling the story because it, it was so cold that night. It was like almost freezing, and uh, that that track they never turned it over. You know those tracks for late models and stuff. They wanted it hard packed so they could dig it. And so basically, all they would do is water it all week, and it it kind of just looked like you know, when you show up on Saturday, it it almost still kind of had a groove in it from the week before. You know they didn't do a whole lot to it. Right. Well. All stars showed up and they went out to water the track. And I guess apparently it just like froze on the track because the guys went out for practice. And I remember Hewitt went into turn three and four and a group of them kind of dumped it, you know, crashed into the, the wall and stuff. And Hewitt actually got out and slipped on the ice and fell. And they were like, no, nope, races are over for tonight. We're done. <laughs> they, they froze the track. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't realize that. Yeah. That, um, <laughs> No, go ahead, Aaron. No, I was going to say, you know, we're talking about Kyle Larson. I'm um, kind of go back for a second. Just, you know, the learning curve driving an Indy car. Um, and it made me think, Jimmy, of a story you were saying about, <clears throat> I think your first couple of years Indy, um, you got into, was it Jason Leffler's car for Treadway? In 2000. Yeah, and, and you, in that moment, you're like, this is like just a completely different race car. Like, I don't know how I can go back and drive the car, um, the car that I've been driving, but... I mean, obviously, with Kyle, he's going to be in a pretty good car, so I don't think he'll have that problem. But in a situation like that, you know, it 
definitely probably makes learning curve a, a little a little harder. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's I, a good I think part. Think about that story every once in a while because, man, that had to be so dejecting to just like, oh man, I didn't realize how good a car I could have. It, it and that's the thing. Like you know, my first you know couple years there, you know, is um, I didn't have you know teammates like you know. Even Tony's first year, you know, he had Cheever and Lion Dyke, you know, there at Menards and stuff, and Brayton. You know, I mean, he had some really brilliant drivers and stuff that he could bounce stuff off of, which was awesome. You know, I didn't, I didn't really have that, you know, and it was just a dumb kid trying to to learn on my own. And I thought I had a really fast car. I mean, on the time charts, you know, the car was fast. Um, but until 2000, like I said, when when Jason was down in Charlotte and I. Uh, they had me get in his car and I hopped in and it was a co-op deal between Treadway and Penske that year. Yep. And, you know, Ari was still running. So they were getting, you know, info from Ari and stuff. And I hopped in that car and just the, the five laps I ran in that thing. I remember coming to my guy and my crew chief when I got out and I just was like, Brad, we're in trouble. Like if that's how cars are supposed to handle here, we're, we're not going to have a good day tomorrow or, you know, on, on Sunday. This is wow. But at least that from that point on, I knew, what a good car felt like there, you know, right. fortunately, Larson, he's, he's with, he's going to be with a great team, great, you know, people, other great drivers are going to be on that team. So he's going to have a lot of feedback and he's, he's going to be light years ahead of, of where I was, you know, first time I got hopped in one, that'd be awesome. You know, that, that brings me to this, you know, and I'm glad you used the word feedback because that's what I always said. Um, you know, how hard was it learning that, that feedback and getting that feedback to your engineers? Because it's just just a different world. It was my first couple of races. I mean, it, push and loose. That was easy. You know, it's either you know, right. <laughs> it's either push or it's loose. That that's super easy. Uh, first of Everything, all, it's understeer oversteer. Yeah, with I, I, I never <laughs> went over that way. But <laughs> but the the one that really got me was at first when the engineers was like, "Well, do you feel the car rolling over at all?" And you know, I had just came from silver crown cars and sprint cars and midgets you know that move yeah, it's like this. this yeah, yeah this, this thing's like a you know a, a millimeter that and i just i was like roll no i don't feel this thing rolling over in the right rear at all i don't literally feel it rolling at all but it was you know after a couple races i really did you know you started getting used to that that feel and it's something even with him you know they get him enough testing miles in it he'll he'll start feeling that and once you start feeling, you know, oh, it's tipping over on the right front or oh, it feels like, the, you know, the left rear is hiking up or, I mean, it's, it's the same, same exact feedback as a, you know, a NASCAR that he's running, you know, with all four corners, the way it rolls around or even, you know, sprint car midget, whatever. I mean, it's all the same, but it's just those things are so low that it takes you a little bit to, to start feeling, you know, the car pivoting around on the corners, on the, on the four different corners. Yeah, I, I would imagine stuff like that just – and you didn't grow up in it too, so that makes a whole different thing. Uh, I mean, you just, uh, yeah, it's just you have to have so much sensitivity in your body. I think. Uh, Join us is my nephew Chris. Chris currently runs midgets. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, what's up? Hi, Jimmy. What's going on? What's it going, Chris? I'm uh, just sitting here watching the uh, the tractors run around and circle. The greatest, uh, the greatest night in tractor and tractor history, right here. They get tons of, you know. I wonder if they get. I wonder if they get those tractors. Yeah, I can't believe they don't have a deal with like Mahindra or something, where they get them for free because they're on TV so much. Good, you would think so. They get some good coverage. Yep. Uh, I'm sure Emmett probably knows knows a guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it always lives the guy. <laughs> no, Emmett was always, uh, you know, I, you know, of course, I don't know those guys, but Emmett and Lanny were always, uh, it, it, at least in the times I was going there, man, they were so easy to work with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially later on when I was helping multiple people, like I could just tell them, hey, I need a car this night, I need a car that night, I need a car that night. And they would do everything they could to accommodate it. They were anytime I ever dealt with them all, they were they were great. You know, we easy to yeah. talk to and like you said, we'll come out of their way to come up and help or try to try to help you out as much as they could. I mean, they were awesome. Yeah. No, absolutely. That that's that's just it. They they really did. Um, you know, like I said, I you know, I haven't been there with a car in years. I have no idea. 
but uh, at least the, in that time frame, they were really, really good to work with. What's well, I'm going to make my. Oh, sorry, Chris. I gotta. We're, we're getting ready to head out, so I'm gonna make my little. You guys have a good night and enjoy. Hey, the, Jimmy, thank it, you so much. It's always a great talking to you. And don't think absolutely. I don't see you. Don't think I don't see you uh, getting in shape there for the go karting. <laughs> I see it. I'm trying. Like I said, that first time I got in the go kart, I was like, I, I got to do something. I can't believe I got this far out of shape. So we've been working on it. So. <laughs> Do you have you a pick have for a good tonight? One. Aaron Scott, Chris, y'all have a, yeah, have a good thanks, night. Jimmy. See you. Do you have a pick for tonight? Uh, I'm going to go with the, the three you mentioned a while ago is probably the, the three I would look at. I mean, it's just any of them can win, but I just – Right. The track changes so much, you know, that second half. I'm just going to go with the old reliable Rico pick just because I think, you know, he, he's going to be there at the end. You know he is. He's going to be somewhere in the top three or four at the end. Right. So. Right. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. All yeah, right. See you. Me. We'll see you. See you guys. All right, Chris. You're carrying the show now. It's all on your shoulders. Big, big way. <laughs> so I see you got your. I, you, I see you got your hat on, trying to look cool, young. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he's younger than you, Bowie. So. Oh, uh, he's nine are. years younger than me. Nine or ten? Nine. I'm ten years younger than Mark, and you're nine years younger than me. Yeah. What, I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? How long has it been since you and Dad went to the Chili Bowl as competitors? Uh, 2000. I don't know. I got a photo. Um, 2003, maybe. Was it? So it's been about 20 years. <clears throat> Well, I heard 2024, or yeah, 2024, um, the Bowies may make a a, um, a visit back to the Chili Bowl. It's penciled in. <laughs> I've noticed. I've noticed with Scott, a lot of things get um, penciled in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then well, they they get erased. We we got to survive yeah. the, uh, through the season to make it to next year's Chili Bowl. So there's. There's a lot of this, but in that deal, I'm sure. Well, I I never said you were going to be the driver, even though it's all your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> smart. That's an, an, another smart. Tip to... That's funny. I mean, do you have any say in it at all, Scott? No, I. It's all his, <laughs> his just... bills money. I have no say in it at all. <laughs> oh, you know that you're. Come and throw my weight around. Highly regarded. I walk in for 10 minutes, throw my weight around, then I leave for about two weeks. You, you tell everybody what they're doing wrong, what they need to do. and right. I, I, am my, I am my father's son. <laughs> Got to go. <laughs> I am my father's son. Yeah. So, what do you, so you've been watching all week, same as I have, except for uh, one night you fell asleep and I was trying to get a hold of you. What uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think for tonight? Kofoid's already out. Strangely enough, it's all that. Not a good week for him. No, Damien he retired. He looked frustrated. Yeah, I can understand. Yeah. Um. I just, man, I, like I keep saying, I, those three that I mentioned earlier, Dorson, Rico, and and uh, and um, oh, CB, I just, and CB looks so good. Dorson, I think, will win it, but man, CB looked good. Yeah, he did, and um, he's he's working with uh, the Swindells and Bertrands, and he, so he's got. A good, even though it's a new, uh, technically a new team. A lot of definitely got a good. He's got a good ecosystem around him. That's for sure. But there's a handful <laughs> of guys. All I would say equally have a good chance. Thor probably be at the top of my list too. Um, 
he's just seemed to be really hitting his stride the last couple of years. He won last year. And he looks even this year. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, what was really but, impressive is how good Ace McCarty looked last night driving the other the team car. Yeah. I mean, he you know, he ran third. He hadn't run all year. Yeah, but he's been running the Chili Bowl for a, a many years, so. It's still hard to just hop in one once a year, though, and That's do true. it. I, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just think that that's going to be it. What what uh, what set of races are we on here? Are we on the E's or the uh, or, uh, or the C's or D's? I mean, I could be wrong, but I think the C's. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure either. How'd the uh, volleyball games go? She did really well. They're, this is a new team that they put together. This is their second weekend, and uh, they finally won their first match tonight today. So she's oh, that's good. That. So, you know, a lot of people out there, if anybody's watching, you know, they obviously don't know too much about me or Chris. Chris, kind of explain to them a little bit, uh, like, your – background the sport uh and kind of what your what your program looks like i mean because you you are very unique amongst the people who race today um because you do your own motors you do your own motors and that sort of thing yeah dad and I, it's basically just me and dad um doing our thing um years we kind of been transitioning away from a traditional uh, push rod, girty, Chevy headed type engine into a uh, kind of new deal with, with the Honda um, uh, kind of becoming more popular for us. It was just kind of a way to uh, try to stay competitive in the national scene within our budget. Uh, so far, so good. Um, we're just kind of trying to figure out all the bugs on it on our own. And, and so far, you know, we're pretty happy with it. Um, so that makes us a little different from most of us out, out there. Um, and, you know, we're just a small single car team. We do everything out of our tight little garage. and <laughs> Yeah. Well organized, tight little garage. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now we just we we do what we can. We go racing when we can, when we can afford it. Um, you know, if the driver would quit tearing stuff up, that. <laughs> well, you know, and so Chris is being a little. Um, Chris is being a, a little coy about. It. So Chris. Hey, his dad, you know, like when I say they build their own motors, I mean, they build their own motors. They, these Hondas, they take and assemble them themselves. They do their, you know, I mean, they learn from other people who's done R&D. They do R&D themselves. Um, so he just really, uh, it's it's a very unique thing that Chris does. And just, and like that bullet midget you had that you unfortunately killed over in Illinois, uh, you know, he got it from Keith for free. Uh, Keith was very kind to give it to him. Uh, Chris had to repair it. Um, you know, it just, they put a ton of work into it and built their own motors. And I tell you, you know, while results mean something and I would never say they don't, I, I tell you, there's so much accomplishment just getting to the racetrack and deals like that. Really proud of uh, of just being where we're at so far. I mean, we never stop working at trying to get better, no matter what the situation is. Um, you know, we're pretty happy with where we're at, and you know, we love that we just do it out of pure love for the sport and and you know our connection to it and, and all the people, and that's what we. 
That's why we keep doing it. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, Chris is, uh, you know, my my dad's been to sport for forever. Chris's other grandfather was, you know, ran Indy cars, ran sprint cars, ran midgets, uh, Arnold Knipper. Uh, you know, so Chris, Chris really has deep roots in the sport. Um, like so many other people, he obviously he's not the only one. Obviously, our other guests sitting here staring at us. His family has super deep roots in the sport as well. Um, and Jagger Jones, but uh, it just it, it's I don't know, man. I, I I mean, I would I've said it many times. I've said it on here. I said it'd be great to go over to Speedway and just write a check for ten motors and go out to Spike or whoever and write a check for cars and just go racing. But if you can't do it, there sure is a lot to be proud of and, and you know, be able to repair your, you know, prepare your motors, repair stuff and on your own. So, you know, hats off to you, you know, and of course I know how hard Bill works at it. And uh, so I, there's a lot to be proud of there. Yeah. We've got um, not only dad, uh, Spike Gelhausen usually comes with us to as many races as he can. And um, lately, uh, Ted Hines has also been coming out with us, uh, trying to help us out. And it's uh, along with other friends and family who have helped us along the way to keep going. And, and you know. Who, who would your sponsors be? Well, I mean, can't, can't thank the – Swell guys at Good Guys Heat Conditioning enough for being a uh, longtime supporter and sponsor of our racing team and keeping our homes cozy in the wintertime and cool in the summertime. There you go. And uh, right. well, we all we... North Built Customs, a good friend of mine, uh, hmm. that uh, business. It's a uh, they, they specialize in vin- vin- vintage japanese motorcycles so your your hondas and suzuki's 60s and 70s and 80s and they do everything else too and and even custom builds which they've had some really cool ones um they're on gas lane alley if anybody's got any uh two wheel needs north built customs is the guys to call and then if you got a harley and you want to trick it out where can they go get pipes made by chris bowie uh, horsepower HPI over on Gasoline Alley. Also, we um, take care of a lot of um, uh, Harley Davidsons that are uh, fuel injected. We make our own um, throttle bodies and intakes, and and um, I I work in the fabrication area. Where I make uh, all the exhaust systems and. Another fellow racer of mine, uh, or, or a fellow racer, Billy Pewterball, uh, works with us there. He, he's kind of the uh, shop foreman there. Jimmy Light, uh, a, a current, he still races, um, Silver Crown and wing sprint cars and everything. Uh, he was telling me he into the Chili Bowl 16 times. So Has he really? Yeah. So I didn't um, know that. He and Kent, you know, he and Kent run really good there. I'll tell you what, man. When the when the track gets to the where you got to run the bottom, man, there are very few people as good as Jimmy Light who run the bottom. I mean, Jimmy could really roll the bottom of a racetrack. Yeah, he's um, he's something else. <laughs> I mean, he could he could really like, man. I've watched him several times, and the track blows off and it gets a little slow around the bottom. Jimmy Jimmy is good. Yeah, so Jagger Jones. He's been doing it. A Jagger while. Jones, have you? Uh, hey, Fred. Hey, I will say, Fred's off his win at Speedway Indoor Karting last night. I am. I gave uh, Aaron a little lesson last night um, on the the road course and the slick. Two track. lessons. Two lessons. Yeah, yes. It was a two was lessons not to mess with Jagger Jones. Is that what it was? I knew that. Don't before. ever challenge Jagger Jones. Hey, my was- port. My poor girlfriend was absolutely just terrified. Yeah, I, I might have uh, ran into her a little bit. It was like a, a moving chicane, and it was, it was going a little too slow. And I might have clipped her in one of the tire sections on the trap track. But uh, Bowie did say when I got back that if I, if I would have came back and 
lost to Aaron. He, he might not have let me slept at his house last night. So luckily, yeah, so he, I, I did have a shelter. It, it was it was cold last night. And that truck was going to be cold. It was. It was. But hey, your your always, house is warm. Your house is warm. Thanks. My for the house is good, guys. Nice and cozy. Um. Yeah. I. I gotta tell you, I was a little disappointed that he was six tenths off fast time. Uh, but you know, that's really none of my business. I don't, I really shouldn't have any say. <laughs> I was in that. full speed. I was on the limiter the whole track. I know that's what Chris says too. Chris always tells me how fast he is. <laughs> <laughs> then they stick me with the heart. Exactly. Yep. And then I then I had to hear last night him avoiding the fact that Logan CV beat him in a stock car. We'll give him we'll give him the one the one win of about 15, 15 races. <laughs> you should have seen him last night. So last night I'm like, man, I can't believe you let CV beat your ass out in your home state. And he started looking up the results. He goes, Well, I won this one. I won this one. <laughs> he goes, Yeah, I don't think he beat me. And I said, Oh, I, he beat you once. And he finally I'm, found the race that got beat. I must have crashed or something. I don't quite remember, but you know us racers don't like to lose. No, me being one of them. Chris will tell you, I uh, Chris will tell you, I can push buttons a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so Jagger, I mean, every series you've pretty much raced in. I mean, you you've won, right? Yes. Um, I I don't think there's been anything that I've done, um, really that I haven't won. Which trying to carry that momentum into this year and the Indy next series. So we'll see. We got um quite a bit of competition this year but i'd like to keep that that streak going you know let me ask you this you know for the people who know or don't know jagger uh come out of karting had originally looked at doing uh f1 in europe you know the f f1 ladder that just wasn't feasible at the time so he then did a 180 and went right into stock cars <laughs> Uh, what was that transition like, you know, just coming from this world of it was always, you know, road courses and everything and that focus. And all of a sudden you're running quarter miles, <laughs> you know, third miles, that type of thing. Yeah. So I, I did, I started mostly racing all, all road course stuff growing up as a kid, never did any of the quarter midget stuff or anything like that. So um, there was definitely a transition into the stock cars, mostly just learning how to race on an oval track. Actually, uh, this will kind of go into the theme of your guys' show tonight, but my first time, I believe, on any sort of oval, actually, um, when I was probably about 11, 12 years old, was out at Ventura in a, mid, in a focus midget at the Corey Cruzman School, but um, didn't really go, get too far into that. Uh, the family wasn't too keen on me going the kind of sprint car midget route. So I, I got in the stock car stuff or legends actually um, is kind of where I started uh, when I was still carting a little bit on the oval stuff. And it was, yeah, mostly just the transition of learning how to race on an oval. It's completely different. You're um, a lot of side by side racing, a lot of um, stuff where you're fighting for tents and um, just that last, last little bit saving tires kind of also at that time, learning how to drive a, a bigger car once I got into the late models. Um, so yeah, it was definitely in transition, but I was young, uh, felt like I learned pretty quick, was able to go out and get some wins in the late model first year, went, went the second year, went and kind of dominated some stuff on the West coast, even went back and won a little bit on the East coast. So, um, it was cool. I mean, I, I have a lot of respect for that type of racing. Everyone thinks that, oh, you're racing on an oval, um, that just looks easy, looks boring. But, um, <laughs> honestly, for me, it's quite the opposite. I, I wouldn't say there's a single part of oval racing, in my opinion, that's um, easier necessarily than road course racing. I think to be the best at anything, it's pretty much equally as hard with that many people and that much competitions on both sides of it. So um, it was fun. I mean, I really liked the oval stuff. It was hard. It's a lot about getting your car. Um, I mean, a lot of people are so close in times and um, it's you're doing a lot of laps of the same track. So it's a lot about getting the car figured out, really getting the, mo the most speed and the setup dialed in. I think that's super important. You can't really drive through a, a ill handling car. So um, I enjoyed it though. That's for sure. 
Yeah, speaking of open wheel, you actually drove for the great Steve Lewis in Focus Cars too a little bit. Um, yeah, I drove the that the Honda Focus Midget a couple times on at Madeira and Vegas. Um, that was pretty fun on the only on the pavement stuff is what I raced, but I had a good time right. doing that. I was pretty young. I was uh I think I was 13 or 14 doing that. So I did a couple races. I enjoyed it. Um, I kind of always do wish, and I mean, it's not too late now to hopefully be able to do and get in the midget on some dirt. Sometimes that, that really looks fun. I think the chili bowl would be a, a cool event to do, but like to maybe <laughs> have a little bit more practice, um, than just show up at the chili bowl one year. We were, so. Me and Scott were talking about that earlier. Well, yeah, I, I was talking to uh, Scott as well. Like, I think if you, if you want to do it, if I was ever going to do it, I'd try to um, maybe get a few races or at least a good amount of practice under my belt. So I kind of felt a little bit more confident going <laughs> than just kind of showing up with my, my helmet and my suit and um, seeing what I could do. I'd, I'd like to get a little bit of seat time before that, but, you know, never, never rule anything out. I think that would be a, a cool, cool event to um, see how I could do in. What was crazy is, is we were, you know, sitting there watching the last few nights and how many people you, you knew from your go-karting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we were. It was funny. A lot of kids that I've coached or raced against for quite some time. Um, I mean, I think other than uh, kind of quarter midgets or, or some of the dirt outlaw stuff, a lot of kids that do want to go into that um, the midget and that type of racing often do start in, in karting like I did. So uh, across a lot of paths with drivers that are running the chili bowl this week drivers that are already in f1 when i was over racing in europe kids in indycar nascar so um it's kind of cool coming from that background you kind of see everyone disperse different ways and find success in all different types types of vehicles and countries and racing disciplines so um yeah it's cool to see kids that you you know and raced against kind of doing well and all sorts of different stuff So Chris, did, uh, problem with that's kind of the problem with mid racing is you don't really get a chance to get much practice in before you do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I was saying more of like practice, uh, kind of like some races under my belt, kind of use those as the. I mean, that's really the best way to practice than anything from from my experience is just going out and racing. So it would be cool to try to maybe do a couple of those a couple of races here and there to kind of, you know, just get comfortable and that type of stuff. Cause I mean, obviously I've driven a lot, a good amount of different stuff, but um, I mean, those guys are running multiple times a week. So you kind of have to be somewhat prepared if you want to go out and do at least he, uh, competitive. He's definitely getting his practice in yesterday on the slick track. <laughs> So. I don't know how much that relates by any means. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, you know, the big thing is, and Chris, Chris actually come out of, you know, some karting as well. <laughs> the biggest thing is, is you got to drive the cars with the, I mean, as you and I were talking, we were talking about a little bit how the cars work, but you drive them so much with the throttle, um, where other types of racing, you know, it's just, a lot different but you drive these so much off the right rear you drive them with the throttle and it's a real i mean you gotta have good footwork though don't don't anybody out there think that i'm just saying it's just stop <laughs> and go i mean you you know we were talking about the different tricks of, of making the chassis work with the brakes and all that type of stuff but it, it's it's definitely a completely different di discipline yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I think from what I've noticed, transitioning from the, the stock car stuff to the open wheel, I mean, every type of racing is completely different. Yeah, it's all uh, kind of categorized under motorsports, but I would say it's just as, just as different jumping in a, a dirt car like that or a NASCAR, or, uh, an open wheel uh, formula type of car is diff just like the difference of playing baseball to football to basketball. I would say the oh, differences that's a good are, analogy, are yeah. really even just just that extreme it's completely different uh, but you do like it's cool to see the guys like Ferrucci and um, even Larson kind of trap going all over running all sorts of different cars and um, doing pretty well so I mean it definitely can be done there's guys I think a good race car driver can kind of figure 
it might take some time, but a good race car driver will be able to figure out how to, how to be fast in pretty much any type of cars with the right, the right people and the right time. We just had a conversation with um, Jimmy Kai and Donnie Beachler about just driving, you know, many different cars like during the week, like Kyle Larson, the guy jumps into, well, like three or four cars sometime during the week in between NASCAR races. Um, and the question I asked Jimmy and Donnie was like, if they thought it was really more of a distraction or more of an advantage because you're doing all these different cars. But Donnie really brought up an interesting point. Like it's just um, once you're used to going like 230 mile an hour or whatever, it just it you get adapted to speed. And when you're just continually doing it, um, it's more of an advantage than anything. Yeah, I think from what I've noticed in my racing is not that speed's irrelevant, but you you do get used to the speed. It's more it's more about figuring out the kind of the driving characteristics and the driving style you need to be fast in that car. Like the speed, you kind of your eyes adapt pretty quickly. You you get used to it after some laps. It's mostly then f- figuring out the techniques of going fast for each different co- type of cars. And um, I would say, I don't think it can hurt by any means. I think the transition, maybe if you've kind of stuck to one discipline. Um, the transition might be harder, but I think guys like that, them transferring from car to car, even like you said, in the same weeks, I think you get used to kind of, you don't get too stuck with one driving style, which is a good thing. And you, it'll help you adapt more, even in, like for Larson's case, like if um, a, a new car comes out and you kind of got to adjust your driving style, I think he's going to be the first one to, to be comfortable kind of trying new things because he does have the the discipline and the experience of driving different cars. So I, I really think it, it does help. Like you look back in um, kind of my grandpa's era, era, they were kind of going all over from at least him and a lot of those guys like Mario and um, Dan Gurney as well, like jumping in sports cars, indie cars, dirt and pavement, doing off-road Trans Am, all of that stuff. And um, I think there's a reason why a lot of those guys in that era were so good because they did so many different things. So I mean, I think we should, I think people are trying to bring that back and replicate that a little bit now. Like Larson, we we're talking about um, Bell, a few other guys. So I, I think it's cool to see, it's cool to see where they stack up to against the best in each discipline. Yeah, I, I agree. I, and for anybody listening out there, uh, kind of tell them what you're doing next year. Yeah, so I'm racing the full Indy Next series, formerly Indy Lights. For some of you guys don't know, but they kind of rebrand the series. Um, it's under Penske and IndyCar's um, kind of guide now. So they're, they're operating it, which is cool. We're on the Firestone tires. Um, so we have 11 race weekends, 14 races. We start first one March 5th in St. Pete. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm only about a, just over a year into my kind of open wheel journey. So it's kind of surreal to, to be moving up, up the ladder this quick, but, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think I'm ready. I think, I think we'll have a good year this year with Kate Motorsports, um, a, a new, new team, or they've been in the series before in the past, but kind of returning to the series. So a new car for them to figure out, um, which will kind of take a lot of, uh, feedback and, um, a lot of work from me as well, but I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenge. I think, um, did well this past year in USF 2000, won a race, rookie of the year. So I think the timing's right. I think, yeah, there's going to be a learning curve, but um, I think we're going to be competitive. Hopefully, like we were talking about earlier, be, up, be able to fight for some wins this year. What, um, you know, what, I know you went and tested and you mentioned it, you know, it's just so much different than the USF 2000. And what, uh, how long did, do you think that you still that you feel settled in yet, or do you think how long do you think it'll take you where you feel comfortable in those cars? Um, I mean, which is relatively speaking, because really to feel comfortable, you have to be uncomfortable. Exactly on the yeah. edge of being fast. Yeah, yeah. I think um, those cars are a lot faster, a lot more horsepower. So, um, I mean, you get used to the speed pretty quick. Um, I've driven fast cars with a lot of horsepower before especially in the stock car stuff but it's about a lot about figuring out the down extra downforce we have um how you how you apply that power especially with kind of a, electronic throttle in these cars um, which is a little different than some of the stuff i'm used to so it's kind of 
kind of figuring out the throttle mapping and the downforce and um, all that stuff, a little bit bigger car, bigger tires. So there is a transition there. Um, but I mean, it's, it's mostly most of the same techniques, same similar type of driving that um, I, I learned throughout this past year. Um, but definitely going to be different. Yeah, it, uh, it's just, you know, I, do you get, do you feel like you get, uh, and maybe this is just what it is, right? Do you feel like uh, people expect you to be, like for some reason, whatever, because you're, you're who your family is, they expect you to be fast immediately? Do you ever feel that kind of pressure or? Or at least not pressure, but at least that kind of feeling around you. Uh, I don't think because of the the family name or really any of that, but I I think I just expect that of myself. I okay. I kind of always have uh, prided myself on like being able to kind of go fast right away in a lot of different cars or at different types of tracks. So I, I think that pressure is more coming from myself personally because I I know I I've done well and. Um, all sorts of different stuff I've done before. So I don't see why um, I, I, I can't do it this year. Right. Chris, do you, you know, you're kind of somewhat on the other end of the scale. I mean, like we talked about, you are, you are truly a blue collar racer. Um, do you, how long do you feel like it takes you to get acclimated in the cars again? Uh, you know, you know, you come out of the winter where you haven't raced very much. You can't get to Australia. You can't get to New Zealand. Uh, Chili Bowl's pretty expensive. Haven't been able to do it uh, yet. Uh, you do get to run Ducoin. Uh, but how long do you do you feel like it takes you a while to transition back into being a driver? Um, yeah. I mean, it just try to hurry up and, you know, get, get back to, to good – as soon as you can but yeah i mean especially for me there's it, it takes a little bit um especially when you go there with some unknowns like you know either a new car or a new engine package or you know just you know usually winter time you're 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 coming up with with new equipment and, and updating and and trying to you know make your program faster by doing different things and you know when you show up to a uh uh, uh, an event where realistically 20 guys could have a, a, a good shot at winning um, with 30 other guys there. I mean, yeah, it, you, you know, it takes a little bit, you know. Sure. Plus they're going to make you look bad. <laughs> and then you got to hear about it. Magnifies it. Especially and then you got to hear about it afterwards. All those guys, you know, running the chili bowl, running the shootout, they're all they're in in mid season form. And I could definitely see that being hard to kind of come out right out of the gates and trying to compete with them uh, kind of right away after having a, a little break. But at the same time, you're not looking for excuses, you, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you, you showed up there to to be competitive and be fast. And, you know, when when that's not happening. It's, it's not a good night. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, especially, you know, as we've noticed, uh, those stretches where you've been able to run three, four nights a week for multiple weeks in a row. I mean, you're, you know, the performance level just goes up and up and up because you get, you know, your spatial awareness, your timing, all of that down. Absolutely. Well, and you know what to expect, you know, you're, you're not just right. getting strapping in blank minded. You, you have a really good idea of what to expect and what you're doing. And, you know, and it also goes with getting used to the guys you're running with too. Like that also. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's not just pushing pedals and, and, you know, wheeling the steering wheel. There's a lot that goes into it and um, you got to take everything to I think one thing I've always been fascinated with the kind of dirt side of things is how different the track is every time you go on it. Um, like with the pavement stuff and the road course stuff, like, yeah, there's 
the temperature will change, but the, the dirt's not completely changing. And that's one thing I've always kind of been fascinated by. And uh, every time I watch kind of maybe making some mental notes about and really f- kind of focusing on is how, how the track completely changes. Um, how do you like, how do you necessarily predict that like mentally as a driver and also like setup wise? It's hard to do. Um, a- again, a lot of it comes with um, experience and, and racing 50, 50 times a year. You, you kind of got a good idea of what you're going to do throughout the night. You know, when the track is heavy, you got the front end down. Um, you know, the track has a bunch of grip. You know, later on, you know it's going to slick off, but it just depends on when and how, and, and you always have to be in front of it and make the right adjustments at the right time, whether that be with shocks in the car or set up in the pits or, you know, just putting your car where it has to be, where the fastest place on the track times, whether that, you know, and it doesn't matter, you know, what's going on around you with the other cars or, or yellows or anything. I mean, you just always have to be right where you got to be to be successful at those races. I, uh, I don't, I mean, you know, it, it's all competitive. You know, the top levels of the sport are all competitive. But, man, you take, like, the World of Outlaws or USAC Midgets or USAC Sprints, All-Stars, man, to win any of those races, you've got to be so good. Same thing with your Chili Bowl. You just have to be so on top of your game. I mean, is there any races out there really that's harder to just make the A main than the Chili Bowl? I mean, how many how many cars were there this year that tried to make it? Three hundred and something. Um, I'd say Knoxville, even though they have lesser cars, uh, really hard to make the A main. Um, you know, you, you go into the dirt late model world, you got the World One Hundred, sure. um, that sort of thing. I mean, those races are really hard to make as well. Uh, in the open wheel world, though, certainly this is, uh, you know, the most interesting thing, and again, this goes back, uh, like Jagger and I were talking this week is how many of these guys talk about how nervous they are going down that ramp. And we're talking like Chase Briscoe was talking about how he was more nervous on the ramp for his first heat than he was lining up last year in the Daytona 500 for the green white checkered. And I just, I, I mean, it really that kind of really surprises me, to tell you the truth. A lot of pressure on those guys, you know, especially a guy like him. He actually he's bringing along sponsorship from the NASCAR deal uh, with Mahindra. Um, he's got you know experience. He's got all the equipment. I mean, you know, a guy like him expects to be running up front. Right. Yeah, I think some of that pressure comes too from what we were talking about earlier where he, he probably doesn't, he doesn't get out and run the dirt stuff as much as uh, those other guys he's racing against and he's expected and, and knows he can compete and win at that level. So it's hard too, cause you're, you're kind of not in the full swing of that type of racing and coming out. Uh, that, that is pretty interesting to hear him talk about too. I think that goes to show also how hard and um, how one little mistake, like you see, Buddy Kofoid, um, one mistake that's not even your fault, one piece of bad luck, and you're fighting from the E and the, the F and even lower mains, and you are you're really put yourself in the trap there with, with one mistake that could or couldn't even be your fault. So I, I think that's what is so cool about the Chili Bowl is you have to be pretty much flawless to, to have a shot to win. You have to do well in your heat, your qualifier, um, and stay out of trouble and um, – if you don't finish that that A main on your night, then you're really setting yourself up for a for a, a rough Saturday. Boy, that's true. And you see it with Copoid, like you said. One, you can't yeah. have slip, and, it, and it's really you got to kind of a smaller deal for you because your preliminary night becomes so important. Uh, your heat race, you know, just just putting yourself in, in a good spot at the end of your prelim night so you're not buried so far back. You, you got a chance on Saturday. 
Um, oh, Justin Grant just almost got upside down the pole shuffle. He's going to run last yeah. in his in his pole shuffle race. Axum's going to win it. Base is going to run second, and uh, Mitchell Moles is going to run third. I think. Takes a lot of luck too, just like that. <laughs> yeah, just one little misstep. Well, you know, a lot of people may not realize. You know, I think they do now because the Chili Bowl is so popular. Like so many of these cars, they don't even run them during the year. These cars are set in the corner. They're all, you know, pretty much special built for the Chili Bowl. I mean, uh, the rules are a little different for Tulsa. You're allowed to, um, you know, run a lighter car, you know, which means you have a lot lighter parts that are susceptible to being torn up if you, you know, use them a lot. Uh, the frames typically tend to be mm -hmm. a little lighter than you what you want for outdoor racing. Uh, so, you know, you that's a whole nother mix of this deal too, you know, makes a difference. Yeah, it, it really does. Isn't Coons the team that usually has like 10 cars in Chili Bowl or wasn't there? Isn't so there they, they took 14 this year. They had 15 last year. Uh, boat boat probably had, what do you think, Chris, six or eight this year? Um, Kloss is not being there. I mean, they they were taking four, five, four, or four, five, or six. Um, but uh, yeah, Coons, they they definitely bring a lot of cars. And the thing is, with them, you know, ten of those cars at least, they're good enough to to run up front too. I mean, <laughs> that's right. how good they. I mean, they're they're just not renting rides to anybody. I mean, they get kids that can win and, and be competitive. Yeah, who was uh, Jay, Chase Park was somebody that you uh, that you raced with a little bit, right, Jagger? Or he's a little yeah, younger I, than you I don't know. He's towards? a little bit younger than me, but I I actually coached him a little bit. Um, yeah, last year or the year before, um, in some of the karting stuff. So it was cool to see see him be i know he's been doing pretty well um uh in the, the midget stuff or he's kind of spent some time doing it the last year or two uh, maybe even a little more but um him uh see brent cruz at the at the go-kart track kind of also a little younger than me but um he, he's been doing well so it's cool to see those kids that were competitive and um doing well and karting where he where i started kind of make this transition over and, and do some dirt stuff and be doing well in that as well. So Rico won the last one. And then, uh, you have on the pole of this one, you have, um, um, McIntosh, you got Thorson, Rico and, uh, Gallobank. All right, guys, I got to sign off here. The kids want to go to a movie. Take care, Chris. So, Thanks for take jumping Chris, on. Thanks. Guys. To you, Chris. See yeah, yeah. Bye. Chris don't know uh, yet, but he's, lo he's losing his ride to Jagger next year. <laughs> he don't know yet. <laughs> we'll have to do uh, – some convincing to my uh to my mom but yeah i think we could make it past that if the the question came up so <laughs> we'll see well we were me me and scott were talking about some potential liveries that would be cool for the car so um <laughs> yeah we'd have to work on that yeah. there's there we got there's several we could definitely do man look at macintosh well you guys aren't watching but macintosh just won that he kind of walked them on that uh, on that race. So how how does it work? Do you do the the four that run? Do any of them move up to the to the so, next so, one? So, so how, yeah, that's how it works. The two that the top two that win, they move on to the next one, but they start third and fourth. Yeah, I think that's a a pretty cool way of doing it. Give the fans yep. some extra racing and also get those guys like. I mean, all the guys who are running the B and C that are going to make it to the A have some laps that day, um, get to figure out the track. So 
good for those guys to be able to, you know, kind of see what, how, where the track is and get ready for the A main. Yeah. So this one has that Hank Davis has CV. It has uh, McIntosh and Torson. Uh, the bottom is definitely the fast way around right now. At least, at least it looks like it. Maybe CV can clean the top off, get by him. Um, Davis still leading by about half car width. So you got CV up top, Thorson up top, and then you got Davis on the bottom with McIntosh behind him. And Thorson just spun. Or he almost spun. And CV got by him, getting off two. And uh, Davis is going to run second. CV's going to win it. Well, there you go. I think, like we were talking about last night, it's going to be hard to beat CV, especially with that momentum just from what that was just last night, right? That he he won. So yeah, a lot of. So I I him. I feel the three like we talked about last night: Rico, CV Thorson. I I'm picking Thorson. But I think CV, you know, like you said, I mean, and they've had a great, like they, well, in fact, CV's starting on the pole of the feature. So that was the last one. So CV's going to start on the pole. Davis is going to be second. Um, and Doris is going to start fourth. So. Yeah, I, I think it's like you were saying, 55 laps, even though it can go by quick on that size of a track, it's still a long time. So it's a long time, but you got, you got to be careful as the guys who are, who are super good early typically aren't good late. Mm -hmm. And then lap traffic coming into play too. Yeah. You, know, no. you never know. All right. It could be something right in front of you stopped nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was going to tell you, you can't, you can't bend any parts on this thing next year. Like you, you're not allowed to bend a shock or, or an axle. You got to keep it clean, but you also got to run up front. It's a very tough ask. I don't, uh, not too sure if I can, or if <laughs> not only just me, if, if anyone could, could sign <laughs> off on that contract. No, it's not easy. No, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a tough ask right there. It is. I'm, uh, I'm tough, but fair. Did you guys make any, I, I know you're saying you think <clears throat> Thorson, did you guys make any official picks yet? Not official. Um, Beaser, who'd Beaser say? Rico? Did you say Rico? No, who, I would have to go back and watch the tape now. No, maybe he did. Yes. What? Uh, no, Jimmy said Rico. Beaser said Rico. Grant. Yes. Um, right. And then, uh, which Grant's going to be starting deep. Um, I'm saying Thorson, and I'm guessing that Jagger's going CV. My my pick would have been Thorson, but if you're taking him, I'll, I'll take CV. There you go. <clears throat> well, because you know that if he can beat you, then he should be able to win this race. That's a that's a good way of thinking about it, I guess. <laughs> When did this happen? No, when did this happen with CV? Um, it was when he was doing some of the late model stuff. Some of the mm -hmm. he was doing some oval stuff uh, with Toyota back. That was twenty end of twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen. End probably, of twenty seventeen, early twenty eighteen. So I think I I think he he won one of the races that one of the <laughs> he won one late model race that I can remember, and that was the one he beat me. I think I might have crashed so. We need to get a shirt. We need to get a shirt mate. We need to get a shirt mate, Scott. That says I beat Jagger Jones. <laughs> we should. Yes. Aaron, Aaron yes. Can, that Aaron is what's going to happen yet. next year. That no, is happening next year. What Aaron won't Jagger? be able to wear that shirt. No, I won't. No, no, no way. No, Aaron. Unless, unless I, the next well, time we well, we've already set the ground Aaron rules talk. on that. If if Aaron beats you, that that's a big <clears> deal. I don't think you have to worry about that, but. Uh, you know, I'm I'm getting kind of tight with fast times, folks, and maybe I can slide them, you know, thirty dollar bill or something. They can, you know, turn down the power of his card a little bit, and then, but that wouldn't be fair. But what's fair? That's right. Is, is racing ever fair? Who? No, it's not. 
there's one thing auto racing is it's not fair. So there you go. I've, uh, I've yet to find it fair. I find it just sometimes, but I don't find it fair. <clears throat> who's um who's gonna who's in the C main that that is pretty likely or expected to make it at least? I'm I trying. haven't I haven't seen the lineups yet. You know, uh, Kofoid got upside down earlier. Yeah, I done. saw that. I or I haven't watched. I just got back a few minutes ago from yeah driving back from Indianapolis, so I didn't. I haven't watched any today, but I. Just keeping up with Twitter a little bit. I, I did see that happen. Who uh now who was there to greet you? Was it Colby or Mercedes? Um, no one. Colby's <laughs> Colby's out of town and came in here and got my computer out and thought I'd hop in here for you guys' last part of the show. That's funny. Let's see if I can find it. I'm not seeing any for the C mains. Yeah, I'm not sure who the, who's in the C <laughs> yet. It's it's listed here. There's two C main or two C's and, and two uh two B's. Two correct? C's, two B's. Yep. yep. That uh, now the real question, Aaron, is did you get that bicycle put together? I actually did. I did. Oh, that's it, it awesome. Completely put together. I think I'm good. Um, I have a couple things I need to maybe some upgrades. I'll uh, I'll send I'll send Jagger a text about it later because I do have a couple questions about it. But everything is working, so it wasn't that hard. Well, that's a start. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I think I think you'll have fun with that thing. Absolutely. Maybe we'll get you back in the gym too next time. I know. Yeah, I, I definitely I, I was working this past week and that gym has weird hours. So I wouldn't have been able to go on. <clears throat> Let's see. I I'm curious to see who's in this C main, but I think it's gonna be I think the B's and the C mains are sometimes just as fun to watch as the the A mains because it's well, a lot that, of that's where the real people. heartbreak is, right? It is, and uh, that's, that's when where the drama is. And desperation comes into play, and that that always right. makes it entertaining. They've been pretty. Uh, they've been pretty staunch with that black flag. They oh, uh, wow. they used it two or three times today. I'm seeing the the video of the the guy that flipped out of the stadium down the ramp man oh yeah big that crash big oh crash. yeah no this big. was this was early this was earlier today yeah earlier earlier yeah so you, this guy gets upside down getting into one and he gets gets out of uh gets over the catch fence down in one and he then it then it like then it caught on fire at the very <laughs> on top of everything else it catches on fire now he, he, we're not talking about the one from earlier this week who who was that now who was that again Ashton uh, Torgerson, and he from I saw a video of him. He's you guys probably might have talked about it, but he's art. He's at the track today. Yeah, um, wow. that hospital. big black guy. It's crazy. Yeah, that is quite quite impressive to be for one living from that, then walking, yeah. being at the racetrack just a couple of days later, watching. Yeah, he uh... pretty lucky. I, that's another kid Jagger knew from karting. Yeah, he's he's from Arizona. Him and his brother don't don't really know them too well, but they were always at the go kart track in Phoenix quite a bit when um, me and my brother were back out there many years ago. What we need is a Jace Jones sighting at the Chili Bowl. <laughs> Man, now if there was ever a place built for Jace Jones. That is the Tulsa Expo Center during Chili Bowl time. Yeah, we could I have a, a Jones um, Chili Bowl racing team. Good. You could have, and then you throw, then we just get Jimmy. Ooh, Emmett looking a little rough. I haven't seen him in a long time. I uh, hope he's doing all right. Um, I think Jace would fit, fit right in, getting his elbows up. He might get sent to the back a few times, but. Yeah, he's not afraid to use part it. of the race car. Yeah. And then once he figures out he can use that right rear too. 
<laughs> and then, and if, if a freak thing ever happens, Scott, and I do end up beating beat Jagger Jones in a go kart race, I'll, I'll make. You better a, have I'll room at your go. house. Is all I'm going to say. You better have room at your house. I don't have much room now, but um. Well, you better I build have a tent. on. I have a tent. He can sleep in the backyard. I don't know how I, I do like camping, but it's quite a bit cold in Indianapolis for. I have a hey, I have a buddy a heater for my tent. I, I have a heater for my tent, so you're all good. All right, I have to take that offer up. Jag, Jagger left uh, today, and it's cold. But thanks to good guys, he's nice and warm in the in the Bowie Palace. Valley, yeah, Bowie the good, Palace. good, the good folks and good guys. They took care of. They definitely take care of me. That's for sure. Absolutely. Ryan and uh, Ryan and everybody there, man. They they definitely take care of us. Yeah, so you have... know, chili ball. I'll, I'll say this. You know, we've kind of been joking and that around, but you know, I I view it a little different. Um, I will tell you that maybe, and this is probably my flaw. I, I don't hold it in such high esteem as more than I would just love to win it because I'm competitive, um, knowing that that's unrealistic, you know, to be honest with you. I mean, I just don't have the budgets or anything to do it. Um, I could build the car. I could definitely build cars. I could do it. I could wrench cars. I could do it. But as far as, you know, having cars with the good motors and all the best parts, um, I, but I do have so much respect for this race and I always have, and I always will. Um, it's hard to put on, it's hard to manage that many people. Um, you know, how there's, how they get through these two weeks of racing with, uh, you know, without a lot of drama is pretty amazing. So, you know, just always, I mean, it's a hell of an event. You know, they, they held the first ones, uh, at least the first one on like Super Bowl weekend. Uh, they, they, they didn't do so well. The Super Bowl won that. And they had to adjust. But I tell you, they've, they've really built this into something special. Hey, Aaron, I meant to say this earlier, and I, I forgot. We really need to talk about uh, the Rich Fogler Scholarship. Yeah, so we have we have about one minute left um, because we're in any eight. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then I'm going to go to McGilvery. So, yeah, Rich Vogler Scholarship. So we just had um, Eleanor Vogler on. Um, last week, and she is ninety one, I think ninety one or ninety two. Yep. She's uh, she still works too. She works for the U.S. Census, um, but she's very impressive. Obviously, the mother of Ritz Vogler, um, the wife to Don Vogler. Obviously, she went through, um, really, I mean, t- tons of hardships. Obviously, probably more than a lot of people will ever have to go through losing both her son. And her um, her husband to racing, and you know she started the um, Ritz Vogler Scholarship um, Fund in kind of his honor, and it's been going on for like thirty years now, right, Scott? Yeah, it's it's been going on. Uh, yeah, it has to be close to thirty years, if not at thirty years. And um, so, and what what is the scholarship? Because I know you're you actually know people who so, benefited from. I mean, this, basically. Right? Scott, you know, it's it's a scholarship for students. You can apply. If there's anybody out there with a, a child looking to go to school next year, um, you can apply to the scholarship. I don't know what what the pay. You know what the what the what you get these days. It's been a long time. I had a niece uh, who received one of the scholarships, and they don't just give just one. They they give several out, um, but they're always looking for support uh, to help generate the money to help do these. Uh, they have an event coming up. Uh, when is that event? It's going to be at Raceway Park. It's going to be the same day as the Daytona 500. Same, same day as the Daytona 500. Things starts at one o'clock. Um, but they're going to have Raceway a Park. silent auction. Yeah. And so, you know, if anybody's <clears throat> in the area or if you're out there and you're interested in doing something like that, uh, look it up online. Um, and just, you know, if, if you can give a little bit, that'd be great. It's, it's in remembrance of, a uh, woman who, uh, when you see the video of her talking about her son, she loved her son. She still loves her son immensely. 
and uh, she does it all so people never forget rich and uh and i think it's a great cause um and i think if if you have a little bit you can donate please do because it really does go to a good cause and that's helping students absolutely and um yeah we have a fellow student on on the on the call with us now so yep yeah definitely a, a good cause and hopefully get some people out there yeah, and they need applicants too. She said she wants more applicants. So again, if you've got a child that's in school, going to school, uh, please look it up online and uh, apply. Um, so that is that. Uh, it was great talking to her. And I, I do believe, you know, for someone like myself, Rich is uh, somewhat of a controversial person in terms of how hard he was to race against. If you're just purely a fan of the sport, there was nobody who raced harder than Rich Vogler. There will never be anybody who raced harder than Rich Vogler. And, uh, and Rich Vogler would have fit right in with today's racers mm -hmm. uh, in terms of intensity. And uh, he had the mechanical smarts as well. So please, you know, at least take a look at it and support it if you can. Absolutely. No, great cause. Well, um, <clears throat> Does anyone have any closing remarks before we end this? Who's who's uh before? Because we've all given our picks. Aaron, who's Bears? You got any? Anyone? I don't. I don't know a lot about Chili Bowl, so um, I haven't really been following. I don't have flow next year. I, I probably need to change that. It's just um, it's just hard to watch Chili Bowl, obviously, unless you have flow. But um, well, next Rico, year you might be at the Chili Bowl. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I guess we're going to the Chili Bowl next year, Jagger. So um, I heard you're going too. Yeah, I'll, I'd like to be there if I can make it happen. So even just from watching, I would probably say Rico. Rico is definitely um gonna be up there, like Jimmy said, and then um probably Thorson, right? So those would be my two I, picks. I, yeah. I truly think it's those three. Obviously, Hank Davis is wanting people to to know that hey, I'm here and I'm gonna be fast because he was fast in that qual in that uh, A main shuffle. Um, and who knows? I mean, he could definitely, I mean, the Seymours know how to go racing. The Seymours have been running up front for longer than I've been alive. And, and, uh, for anybody that's older, their, uh, their father was nicknamed a uh, million mile, uh, Louis Seymour. Cause they, they traveled over a million miles to go race. They lived on the East coast and they'd go run the entire USAC sprint car schedule. And, um, so the Seymours know how to go fast. And they're, and they're much like the Hoffmans and sprint cars. So, you know, again, uh, I mean, anything's possible has been stated. Uh, but I just I, – I have to stick with Thorson. And Jagger going to stick with CB. And then I guess you get Rico. Yep, I'll take Rico. All well, right. Uh, Sweet. Well, thanks everyone for um, watching and please hit like and subscribe and um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys the Chili Bowl. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful uh, new year and have a fun Chili Bowl. Absolutely. And we are off the air.